What is going on guys, Greggles TV. I'm gonna give you some tips and tricks for your new TCL Roku TV. I specifically have the 4K 6 Series 2020. This is an amazing TV. I'll link it down below. I absolutely love this TV. Amazing QLED look to this TV. 4K, HDR, Dolby Vision. It's amazing. So anyways, let's get into the tips and the tricks. And most of this stuff is going to be basically in the settings, but before we get into there, I'm gonna show you some easy stuff here. So if you go over to your list of apps over here and you wanna remove these, delete them, whatever you wanna call it, um, you can. So what you're gonna do is uh, put your selection over one of these apps, so I'm on the Disney app. So look at the remote and hit the star button and then it's gonna load up some information. And then from there, use the directional pad on your remote and you can do some things in here. You can rate the app, you can move it, you can remove it, check for updates, give us feedback, or just close out and it'll go back to the main screen. But we're gonna move it, so we're gonna choose move. So you select it, move, and then with your directional pad on your remote, go left, right, up, or down, and place it where you'd like it to go. When you're done, hit the select button on your remote, and that's it. And same thing if you want to remove it. Uh, so let's just find an app. You know, this is Xfinity app. I'm going to hit that star button again on the remote. And then from there, you can hit remove channel and it will basically uninstall it. That's what that's doing right there. So very easy to move and delete apps on your Roku home screen. Let's do this next. What we're going to do is press all the way over to the left, go all the way down until we see home oh, settings, I should say and then press to the right. And now from here, we can do a bunch of stuff. This is where we're gonna we go in and check out. We'll start from uh, the very top, basically. So we're at network. So at network, we're gonna skip all that stuff, remotes and devices. If you wanna add a new remote, this is where you're gonna do it. Themes, this is really, really cool. So you can theme out. As you can see, I have it snowing in the background of this. And uh, if I want, I can change that. So right now, I can press over to uh, the right and there's theme packs to choose from. I can download new theme packs. You can see my theme packs that I have here. There's also popular ones and go back to the left. You can look at wallpapers and download different wallpapers, screen savers. When your you know, screen goes to sleep, you can do that. Sounds, change the sounds if you want of your TV. I currently have it set to that, but if I wanted to, say I wanted it to be Roku Space Sounds, I can click on that and I'm even gonna change it to that. I'm gonna hit get sounds and let it download. It takes a second to download. It's gonna say adding and I can set it from here. And I don't know if you can hear that, but it's going bloop, bloop instead. And if I wanna change it back, you just go back to my sounds, select the old one you had or the one that you do want, set sounds. And that's how you can change your sounds really quickly, really easily. Going back into here, again, you have seasonal themes, screen wait times, all that stuff within here for, for themes. But basically, the, the big difference with this is theme packs is gonna change everything. It's gonna change the look, the sounds, um, everything about it. But if you don't wanna change all that, you could just change the wallpaper, which is the background of what you see right there. So maybe I just want it to look like an Earth space theme. I can set it and download it, or I can view screenshots of what it's gonna look like before I even do that to give you an idea. Or screen savers is when your screen goes to sleep, it's gonna show certain things. Again, you can check this out. Maybe I want it to show uh, a, a clock or something or 4K screen savers. I can preview that screen saver to see what it's gonna look like. And this will give you a good idea of what it looks like when it's set to your, your uh, your TV, and that's what it'll look like. And or, or it can change the sound. So really awesome that you can theme all this stuff out or choose individual things that you wanna uh, change rather than just everything. Let's go back here. Let's go to TV picture settings. This is where you can change your TV brightness and that could be on any you know thing. So it could be on, you could do settings per input so if you're looking at like a, not just your TV, but maybe you're, you have a game console set up on here or a streaming box, you can come into this TV picture settings spot and you can change it. 
You can change it, uh, the TV brightness and all that stuff. You can turn on and off Dolby Vision notifications. TV inputs is where you can rename your inputs if you want. So I only have one thing plugged in at the time of making this video. Streaming box is right there. So if I wanted to change the name of the streaming box, I could go in here and do rename and change it to something else. And when I'm done, I can even set a custom name and icon. So I'm gonna do that. So I know that set up as my Chromecast with Google TV. So I'm just gonna change it to Google. So I'm gonna come over here. Actually, I'm gonna keep it like, just like that, Google TV, that's perfect. So I'm gonna hit okay to that and I'm gonna choose what I want it to look like. So it should look like this, that looks like a streaming box. And now it should say Google TV. I'm gonna see, I'm gonna take a step back. And there it is, Google TV now. So you can name it, remove it, all that stuff. Variable refresh rate, turn that on and off with your TV inputs. Next, we're gonna work our way down until we see system and then press to the right. This is where you can uh, set your zip code. So if you want to get you know, weather information or news or TV information about that kind of stuff, that'll be where you set that. You can change your time right here. You can put a timer on, a sleep timer, so that it turns off uh, at a certain time. Your time zones, clock format, if you want it to be 24 hours rather than 12 or have no time at all. Power, this is a great one to be on. So under power, and you might not have all these settings, but under power, this is a cool one. So this is the one I like. When you power on the TV, you can have it set. It's by default, it sets it to home screen. I have it set so it's last used TV input. So if I'm always using a device, like say I always, always use my Google TV or something like that, I can set it so it's just my Google TV if I want or the last used TV input or the home screen. So anytime I turn my TV on, I'll instantly go to that input or the last thing that I use. So I do the last thing that I use just because generally that's the next thing that I want to do. So that's why I set it to that. But you again, you can set it to a specific input that's already plugged in or say keep it at the home screen. Auto power saving, this is on by default. I would keep it on. Reduce the power after 15 minutes of basically no use. And also it'll turn off after four hours of no use. Standby LED when your TV is off, the standby LED on the front of the TV will be on. If you want to turn that off, there you go. You won't see that like little red light or red light, white light on there, so it doesn't maybe distract you or whatever. Fast TV start. This uses a little bit more energy, but you can quickly start your TV from standby and wake your TV with commands using a voice remote or the Roku mobile app. Fast TV start overrides and uses more power than default settings, but it starts your TV off ultra fast and allows you to you know, turn it on and off with certain devices as well. I would keep that enabled. It's off by default, make sure you enable that. If you want to restart your TV because you're having an issue with an app or something like that or you just want to restart it, this is where you do it under the power settings. So the power is a, is a huge little you know, area in there. USB media, if you didn't know, you can plug in a you know, thumb drive of some sort, some kind of USB uh, port uh, stick or something onto the back of your TV and you can view uh, videos and photos on there. And this just allows you to auto launch it uh, or uh, you know what, what channel to launch if you do that, which is the Roku Media Player will do all that for you. So I would kind of just keep that at default. Control other devices, CEC. So anything that's plugged in via HDMI, you can actually turn the TV on with those devices if you check these boxes. Not all, you don't have to do all of them, but at least the one touch play, play and system standby. I would turn those, I would keep those checked. I'd also keep eARC, which uh, enables you to listen to your TV through your home audio system and control the volume with your TV remote. eARC sends enhanced digital audio to an ARC or eARC compatible sound system. I would check all of those just in case in the future you do set something up like that. You don't have to go searching for it. So very helpful right there. System updates. If you go down a little bit more, you can see system updates. System updates is where you can click on that and check to see if you have any updates for your TV. It'll fit, fix bugs, give you more features. It just depends, but it's always a great thing to check to see if there's anything going on with your TV. If you want to reset your TV, go down to advanced system settings. You'll see factory reset and say maybe you're selling your TV or you're having an issue with it and something's not working. Or maybe you just want to start from new, you can easily factory reset just the TV and picture settings or you can factory reset everything and then you just put in that little code there, 4310 or whatever yours says, and then it'll reset your TV back to its factory reset settings. You can also 
reset your network connection if you're having issues with that. Device Connect, you can enable, disable all that, which pairs your devices as a, such as a Roku voice remote. You can disable that if you want. This is a simple one, but if you wanted to download apps, go back to the home screen. You can go into search or you can go to streaming channels and you can browse. This will allow you to browse through you know different apps and things like that. If you wanna download an app, you just click on it and then hit add channel. It'll add it to your home screen. And that goes with any of these apps that you see right here. Or if you wanna search for something, you can as well. So I know HBO Max just came out for Roku TV at the time I'm making this video. Let's see if it's already showing up. I'm gonna type HBO, it might not show up just yet on this TV, but let's just double check. HBO Max. So I don't see it just yet, but if it was here, it would show up. I can tell it's an app, like H there's the, H oh, there it is actually. I don't even, it just shows it as HBO. I'm gonna hit add channel. It's gonna download that app for me. And it takes just a little bit of time. Hit okay. And when I go back to the home screen, I'm gonna see it. It goes, all the apps go to the bottom, unfortunately, which, or fortunately, I guess, the way you look at it. But remember, you can remove it. Just hit that little star while you're hovered over the app. Hit move channel. And there we go. I'm gonna select a keeper right there. On your phone, or yeah, it doesn't matter if phone, Android or uh, iPhone, or even your tablet this works with, download the Roku app. It's a Roku remote app. This app is amazing. It works great. Go ahead and download this app. Once you have it downloaded, open it up. It's gonna ask you to log in with your Roku account. So when you go in here, you can choose the TV you want. I'll give it a second, it's gonna load up. It's gonna end up showing my living room. I'm gonna tap on that. And now I can control this. You hit the home button, you can see it allows it. And it works really, really, really well. You can do voice talking and stuff in there. It works fantastic. I love this. Very easy to use. If you wanna talk into your remote, all you're gonna do, you should, if you have a voice remote, you're just gonna press and hold the microphone on your remote in order to use it. Open HBO Max. And then when you're done talking, just let go of the microphone. It's gonna launch it for you. So you can ask it certain things on here. Open up the HBO Max app. Go home. And there you go, it goes to home. So there you guys go. There's some tips and tricks for your new Roku TV. I love this one. I can't tell you how much this is a great TV. I'll have more videos on this specific TV as time goes on, but I just want to do a little tips and tricks because there's a lot of cool stuff with the Roku side. I love the interface of the Roku on here. It's really simple and clean and easy to use. Oh, it's shooting, to, trying to go to Google. So there you guys go. Check it out. If you want to pick up this specific TV, I'll link, link it down below. Thanks for watching. See you guys down the road. Peace.